Uh, in today's talk, I'm excited to share some of our recent work on immunoprednisone and how that can be used as the potential biomarker to predict prognosis and response to immune checkpoint therapies in solid tumors. As we know, proteasomes play a major role in the antigen processing, uh, and these proteasomes are of uh, different types, for example, constituent and immunoproteasome, and uh, these are specifically expressed in different cell types. For example, constituent proteasomes are expressed mostly in the non-immune cells, whereas the immunoproteasomes are broadly expressed in the immune cells. Uh, not only a dark cell type difference, also the subunits that form this complex will also be different between these proteasomes. Uh, for example, in the constitutive proteasome, the PSMB gene such as 5, 6, 7 forms the catalytic subunit, whereas in the immunoproteasome, it is 8, 9, 10 that forms the catalytic subunit. Because of the difference in the catalytic uh, subunit, the way that the peptides are being uh, chopped from the uh, proteins will also be different because of the preference in the uh, cleavage site. And as a result, we will get a different peptides being presented on the cell surface depending on the proteasomes being expressed in the cells. Uh, although the immunoproteasomes are broadly expressed in the immune cells, it can also be induced in the uh, non-immune cells as well upon some external signaling such as uh, stress signaling such as interferon gamma or interferon alpha. Um, when uh, these immunoproteasomes are induced, they will uh, preferentially form the immunoproteasome as compared to the constitutive proteasome. Uh, as we know that in tumors, we have a high uh, inflammation and stress signaling outside. And as a result, we could expect higher expression of this proteasome. Imagine the tumor types such as skin melanoma and uh, lung cancers, which have high mutation load. Uh, if those tumors have the immunoproteasome expressed as well, then these mutated proteins will be uh, presented very well on the cell surface. As a result, uh, we could expect a high cytotoxic uh, immune infiltration in these tumors. So in line with this, uh, a recent study also shown that higher immunoproteasome expression in skin melanoma is associated with better prognosis and response to immune checkpoint therapies. One of the possible reasons for this is that uh, because of the high mutation load, the antigens, uh, especially the mutated from the pro mutated proteins, are being presented, and that triggered the immune cell response, uh, especially the activated CD8 cells. And um, because of this, the, uh, uh, the immune response is much better in those tumor types. Uh, independently, a previous studies on uh, non-small cell lung cancer have also shown that uh, the down-regulation of the immunoproteasome is not favorable for the prognosis. Um, this is again in line with the previous study in an opposite direction, where uh, the lower expression is associated with the poor prognosis. However, uh, the extent of this in case of immunotherapy and also in other solid tumors is not known. Uh, so motivated by this uh, knowledge gap, Rahul and Babia from our lab try to look at how immunoproteasomes are expressed in the other uh, solid tumors and how uh, the expression has been um, associated with the immune checkpoint therapies as well. For this, we looked at the RNA expression from TCPA samples, uh, which are not undergone immunotherapy treatment, but rather this tumor type would be helpful to see how the immunoproteasomes are expressed and uh, how it has been associated with the prognosis for the standard of care treatment, which is mostly surgery followed by um, chemo or radiation. And we also looked at the single cell data, available single cell data, to look at the expression coming from the tumor cells. And uh, we also try to include data, uh, expression data from the uh, samples that have undergone uh, immune checkpoint therapy and then try to see how the immunoproteasome expression in the responder versus non-responders. In all these cases, we have looked at uh, the expression level of constitutive and immunoproteasome. And whenever I present the constitutive and immunoproteasome expression, it is just the average expression of the individual subunion that is specific to constitute and immunoproteasome. So first we asked how the constitutive and immunoproteasome expression uh, is present across solid tumors. Uh, because previously we know that uh, the immunoproteasome expression are a good prognosis factor in a hematological cancer. However, their association in the solid tumors is not well known. Uh, so first we looked at the expression level of this immunoproteasome, both complexes. Uh, that we can see in the uh, y-axis as the expression unit and the excesses of the different tumor types. And we could see broadly that the constitutive proteasome, which is highlighted in the brown box plot, 
is higher as compared to the imidinoprednisone. Um, not only that, the intercordial range of the box plot is also different between the two prednisones. In case of the brown block spot, we can see that the intercordial range is very small, meaning that the constitutive expression is kind of consistent across different tumor types, whereas the immunoprotism expression is highly variable, uh, that is represented by the bigger intercordial range. But, however, we could see that um, the expression of the constitutive proteasome is being consistent, whereas the immunoprotism is highly variable. Uh, then we wanted to ask whether the high variability in the immunoproteasome expression comes from the way how the tumor purity uh, is associated with these samples. Because we know that in the bulk RNA-seq, uh, the uh, expression comes from not only from the uh, tumor cells, but also the cells that are uh, in the neighboring, for example, stromal or immune cells. As a result, we see a collective expression um, from the bulk tumors. Uh, to check whether the expression comes directly from the immune cells or the tumor cells, we looked at the single cell data and then we looked at explicitly the tumor cells and asked how the constituent immunoproteasome is being expressed. As we have seen previously, the constituent proteasome is higher as compared to the immunoproteasome uh, and the immunoproteasome expression is still variable um, uh, across cells within each tumor. This suggests that the immunoproteasome expression is highly variable as compared to the constituent proteasome. Uh, in some of the single cell data, we also have the information of the site as well, like where does the single cell come from, whether it is from the tumor periphery or the tumor core. Um, when we try to look at the expression in the context of this uh, spatial architecture, we could see that the both constitute and immunoproteasome are higher in the tumor cells that are at the border as compared to the core. We hypothesize that perhaps the tumor cells that are in the border or in good contact with the immune cell, as a result, these proteasomes are highly enriched in those tumor cells as compared to the uh, core cells, which has the less exposure to the external environment. Uh, then we asked, given that there is a high immune cells or high immunoproteasome expression, do we expect a difference in the immune cells enrichment as well? So for this, we have used the bulk rna data again, and then quantified the enrichment of the different immune cells in the neighborhood by using the gene set enrichment analysis that is specific to different immune cells. And we could see that the tumors that have a high immunoproteasome expression have an enrichment of uh, activated CD8 cells, exhausted T cells, and activated dendritic cells, collectively has a high cytotoxic effect as compared to the tumors that have a low uh, immunoproteasome expression. Uh, this suggests that the expression of the immunoproteasome can trigger um, the cytotoxic immune cell infiltration across multiple solid tumors. And followed by this, we asked whether the tumor cell intrinsically have some pathways that are upregulated given there is a cytotoxic environment outside. As expected, the pathways such as interferon, gamma, alpha, inflammatory response, and reactive oxygen species are highly enriched in tumors that have a high immunoproteasome as compared to the low immunoproteasome. Collectively, this suggests that the immunoproteasome expressions are um, having high, um, in high immune infiltrations and the activation of the uh, interferon uh, pathways. Um, and that can be considered as a uh, hot tumors. Uh, given that there is a high expression of the immunoproteasome association with those uh, immune cell infiltration, we asked whether those are associated with the prognosis for the standard of care treatment as well, which is surgery followed by chemo or radiation in the PCG data. And um, as expected, we could see that in skin melanoma, the higher expression is associated with a better prognosis. Surprisingly, we could see that other tumor types such as cervical, sarcoma, breast, and bladder also have a good prognosis with respect to the higher immunoproteasome expression. Whereas in other tumor types, we have seen bad prognosis. Um, however, the molecular mechanism underlying this is not clear yet. Uh, so we asked whether how much of this good prognosis is contributing from the immunoproteasome expression alone or uh, the presence of cytotoxic immune infiltration in these tumors. For this, we corrected for the um, contribution from the cytotoxic infiltration. Um, and we could see that when we remove the uh, signaling that comes from the cytotoxic in immune infiltration, we could see that the prognosis gets shifted in case of cervical, septum of breast and bladder, whereas in skin it is unaffected, suggesting that 
in skin, immunoprotism expression alone is a good prognosis, whereas in cervical, breast, and bladder, the immunoprotism expression in tumors plus the cytotoxic infiltration is uh, collectively a good prognostic marker in these tumor types. Then we asked how uh, this is associated uh, in the context of immune checkpoint treatments as well. So we have looked at the expression level of constituent and immunoproteasome uh, in those patients uh, that are responded and non-responded to the immune checkpoint therapies. In melanoma, as shown previously, we could see that in respondents, which is highlighted in the pink box plot, have a higher immunoproteasome expression as compared to the non-responders. And we wanted to check how this looks in the other tumor types as well. And uh, to our surprise, we have seen that other tumor types which showed good prognosis previously for the center of care treatment also have a good association for the immune checkpoint therapies as well. Uh, for example, in non-small cell lung cancer, we could see that the higher expression is associated with the responders, similarly in the thymic breast and the bladder. Uh, in other tumor types such as uh, gastric, oral, and renal, we have seen the opposite trend. However, the molecular mechanism is still not um, studied in these tumor types. In case of non-small cell lung cancer, uh, the result that we have seen is quite encouraging because a recent study by using a different cohort uh, from the uh, standard to cancer mark uh, cohort also has seen that the immunoproteasomes are highly enriched in the responder as compared to the non-responders. Uh, even if we take the entire uh, pathways that are um, the downstream targets of interferon gamma, the immunoproteasome uh, subunit indeed have higher expression as compared to the other um, genes that are of the same pathway, suggesting that the immunoproteasome uh, expression, immunoproteasome gene expression alone can be used as a potential biomarker to identify the responders of uh, the immune checkpoint therapies in non-small cell lung cancer. To summarize, uh, what we have seen is that the immunoproteasome expressions are uh, present in the tumors across different solid tumors. Um, and this is mostly expressed in the subset of the tumor cells that are associated in the um, tumor um, border uh, that are in close contact with the immune cells. And uh, the expression of this uh, immunoproteasome is influenced both by the tumor cell intrinsic and the eccentric factors, for example, cytotoxic immune cell infiltration. And that is being strongly associated with the overall survival and response to immune checkpoint therapy in multiple solid tumors besides melanoma. Uh, so collectively, uh, this is an encouraging to see that the immunoproteasome can be used as a marker to differentiate the responder and non-responders of uh, immune checkpoint therapies. With this, I would like to thank the lab members, especially Bhavya and Rahul, who have done this work. The collaborator, uh, Dr. Mohit Kumar Joli from ISC, uh, NCBS and India Alliance for Funding, and ICBC and PCBA for making the data publicly available. And I'm happy to take any questions.